The world we live in is highly competitive and constantly running in a race to become a superpower. Be it China, the United States of America, Russia, Japan, Korea, India, to name a few of the top powers that come to mind, they're all competing, making themselves stronger, self-reliant, scientifically and technologically advanced, basically trying to be holistic superpowers while maintaining diplomatic relations for global peace. Now, one very important element of this desirable power is technology. You can have a lot of money, but if you are technologically behind, you are metaphorically handicapped, let alone powerful. And chips, not the potato ones, but the semiconductors, is the life of technology. Hello and welcome, this is Malika Mishra, and you're watching Cargo Tales, and in today's episode, we are going to talk about chips that are the life cells of basic to high-end technology. From your PCs, coffee makers, microwaves, smartphones, printers, cars, mixers, all kinds of devices that you use in your daily life, to large-scale military missiles, warships, healthcare devices, transportation systems, every functional device around you contains chips. They're in fact one of the most widely traded goods internationally. But the tricky part of all this is that because these chips are extremely sensitive and microscopic in nature, they require uniquely advanced technology to design, manufacture and supply them, which only a handful of companies in the world have been able to ace. And this is where Taiwan, a small island country in East Asia and a long-time target of China, comes into the picture as Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, also called TSMC, is the largest producer of chips in the world. Surprising, isn't it? Chips, the life of technology today, the wheels of the digital world, spread across seven continents and 195 countries, is rooted in a small island called Taiwan that produces over 90% of the world's most advanced processor chips, according to Professor Chris Miller, an alumni of Harvard and Yale universities. In fact, the semiconductor industry is called Taiwan's silicon shield. Chris Miller wrote the famous book titled Chip War, the world's most critical technology that extensively speaks about the complexities of producing semiconductors and the distribution of power around it. Have a look at this video of Miller explaining the saturated power of the chip industry. So chip software uh, is, a, is a pretty clear oligopoly um, uh, with, with really interesting geopolitical implications. Then you need to acquire chip designs and the ability to design chips, lay out the transistors such that they, they solve the problem you want to solve again, requires extraordinary specialization. And it turns out that for many types of chip design, there are just a couple of companies that have the relative expertise. So for example, in making smartphone processors, there are basically three companies uh, that, um, that are capable of making an advanced smartphone processor. If you're looking at making a PC processor, except Apple, PC, Apple computers, there are two companies that understand how to make a processor for a PC. No one else is anywhere close. They're miles behind. Uh, it's been a duopoly for decades in the market for PC processors. Mm -hmm. If you want to acquire a chip that is capable of training an AI system in an advanced data center, well, there are just two companies, really just one company that produces almost all of the most uh, advanced chips for training AI systems in data centers. And the list goes on. So chip design has extraordinary um, concentration effects in that segment too. Moreover, going as per Miller's research, the most complicated machine needed to manufacture an advanced chip is called an extreme ultraviolet lithography machine. ASML, in fact, is a leader in designing and manufacturing the lithography machines that are an essential part of chip manufacturing. These machines took over 30 years to develop. They cost anywhere from $150 million to $200 million a piece and require multiple cargo planes to move them. So an advanced chip manufacturing facility today easily needs around $20 to $25 billion of investment, one of the most expensive factories in the world. Therefore, there are by far only three companies in the world that have made themselves capable enough to produce advanced processor chips and they are Intel in the US, Samsung in South Korea and TSMC in Taiwan. And on top of all this, do you know what the value of this market is? Well, Semiconductor Equipment and Materials International value the 2022 global semiconductor market at approximately $618 billion and expects the market will reach $1 trillion by 2030. In fact, according to an article by Kuni Nagel, 70% of the growth is predicted to be driven by automotive, computation and data storage, and wireless. 
We also found an interesting infographic in a report titled Mapping the Semiconductor Supply Chain, the Critical Role of the Indo-Pacific Region by Center for Strategic and International Studies that showed semiconductor sales by country in 2021. According to this figure, the United States had the largest share of 46% in the sale of semiconductors, followed by South Korea at 21%, Japan at 9%, Taiwan at 8%, China at 7% and the rest of the world making 9% of the sales. Having laid out those data points for you, let's quickly look at some of the well-researched challenges and solutions of this market. Ernst & Young laid down the following challenges of semiconductor procurement process. Imbalances between supply and demand, custom specifications, complexity of the global supply chain, regulation of materials, talent shortage, and impact of tariffs and consumption tax incurred upon inventory adjustments and supply chain reconfigurations. Now, speaking of the solutions, in a study titled Strengthening the Global Semiconductor Supply Chain in an Uncertain Era by Semiconductor Industry Association, a group that represents the semiconductor industry of the United States, in partnership with the Boston Consulting Group, the following government actions were suggested to promote long-term supply chain resilience. Guarantee a level global playing field for domestic and foreign firms alike, as well as strong protection of intellectual property rights, promote global trade and international collaboration on R&D and technology standards, invest in basic research, STEM education and workforce development, advance immigration policies that enable leading global semiconductor clusters to attract world-class talent, and establish a clear and stable framework for targeted controls on semiconductor trade that avoid broad unilateral restrictions on technologies and vendors. But are these solutions being implemented? If yes, where? Well, we would like to bring you the example of Cune Negel that introduced a new air logistics service tailor-made to cater the demands of the semiconductor supply chain and is based on semicon chain quality standard that guarantees process standardization, continuous improvement and service excellence. With this air freight offering, semicon goods are handled exclusively within their semicon chain certified network. Another example is of Apple planning to use its in-house chips for its iPhones. As per a media report, Apple is working to design more chip components in-house with the aim of replacing components that Apple currently sources from Broadcom and Skyworks. Skyworks and Broadcom supply a significant portion of the iPhone's third-party circuitry. The company also aims to develop its own 5G chips instead of paying for Qualcomm's chips. And how can we miss the $2.75 billion worth of investment of Micron Technology, a US-based semiconductor manufacturer in Gujarat, India, after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's strategic visit to the US earlier this year? As per the deal, Micron Technology will set up a chip assembly and test facility in Gujarat, whose construction has already begun. The company will initially invest $875 million in the construction of this plant in two phases and the rest will be taken care of by the state and the central governments. There are many such advancements and actions being taken by different players in the semiconductor supply chain network. However, it's the dampening of the monopolistic power of semiconductor manufacturing that perhaps needs immediate attention, especially keeping in mind its global demand, but saturated manufacturing capabilities. Because let's face the truth, if anything happens to these handful producers and designers of chips, we might not be able to use the devices that we are highly dependent on today. On that note, we hope you enjoyed this episode. To stay updated with more such crisp insights from the world of air cargo and logistics, stay tuned to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.